We are elevating black voices first at four. Our state's business community getting ready to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with a special luncheon. Yeah, the event will recognize Coloradans who have <laughs> all made significant contributions to our state and country. As CBS News' Jerika Duncan reports, honoree Ed Dwight, known around the country for his talent as a sculptor, turned to art when President Kennedy's vision for him did not come to pass. I sit down at the table over there to, to, to get it ready for casting. Inside 88-year-old Ed Dwight's art studio in Denver, Colorado, is a collection of stories told through the sculptures he creates. This is one of the Buffalo Soldiers. He was Corporal Clinton Greaves, and he was one of the 18 Medal of Honor winners during the Indian fighting days. But before Dwight became an artist dedicated to memorializing notable figures in black history, he had hopes of making history of his own in space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When President John F. Kennedy decided to take one step for man, he also made plans to send the first black astronaut to the moon and thought Ed Dwight was a star. When I got this letter, November the 4th, 1961, offering me this opportunity to be the first Negro astronaut, I thought these dudes were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why me? I mean, what in the world is this all about? You know, and I said, no. I mean, my first reaction to it was, that's the nuttiest thing I ever heard. At the time, Dwight was a 27-year-old Air Force pilot who had to be convinced to take the leap. I consulted my mother, and my mother's telling me uh, about all these stuff, stuff that I could do as a symbol and think of, uh, you know, all the kids, you'll get excited. Your mother tells you this is bigger than you. This yeah. is you representing African Americans. Exactly. This is definitely uh, a sign of progress for the Negro in the country. As the first African American astronaut candidate, Dwight was considered a source of pride within the black community. He toured the country promoting his newfound journey, but when he returned to the space program, he faced a new frontier of opposition. So all these white folks that I'm dealing with, I mean, my peers and the leadership was just horrified at the idea of the president appointing me to this position. You were known as the Kennedy boy. Yeah. I was the Kennedy boy. After four years of intense training, NASA decided Dwight did not have what it took to be an astronaut. The man, dubbed Kennedy's boy, was quickly brought down to Earth. Are you now, in fact, completely out of the astronaut program? Is there a possibility of you ever being back in? I don't know. I don't have any idea. Astronaut dreams dashed. Dwight left the Air Force in 1966. He worked at IBM and started several businesses, including a construction company. Every evening I would go to each one of my sites and all the copper and the steel and pieces of stuff that were left over and I'd throw them in the back of my Mercedes and I'd go home and then I had to teach myself how to weld. One person who took note was his friend and Colorado's first black lieutenant governor, George Brown, who saw Dwight's work and encouraged him to pursue it seriously. George had been to one of my parties and saw this art in my house. And they wanted to do a sculpture of me for the Capitol. And I said, I said, well, that's not what I do. And he says, you're going to become one of the famous sculptures in the United States of America when I get through with you. And I laughed at him. I said, George, you are full of stuff. Since then, Dwight has created nearly 20,000 gallery pieces and more than 130 memorials across the country, honoring those hidden figures of black history. I had never sculpted before. I was 45 years old like this. Mm -hmm. He says his favorite memorial is the one he did at the Texas State Capitol. 200 images of people yeah. on that Texas memorial, and they all have different personalities, and they all have, have different dreams, and I, I wanted to put that in their faces. A long way from space, these sculptures give us a better sense of the world in which we live. How do you think your life would have been different had you been the first black astronaut into space? You know, I probably would have done the same thing that black guys did go into space. You know, and that became the highlight of their life experience. Because I wouldn't have done anything, I probably wouldn't have done anything else. Does it still bother you today that you were not the first? That didn't bother me. Uh, you, know, it, you know, it was a great opportunity and it, all the little parts and pieces of everything you see in this studio and, and all those buildings down there is a manifestation 
of what I learned uh, in the years that I was in that program. What do you want your legacy to be? You know, the legacy I want is that I gave a damn. And that's it. A legacy sculpted by the history he's determined to preserve. Jerika Duncan, CBS News, Denver, Colorado. He and his work, incredible. What an inspiration. Yeah.